Okay, so I want to talk about SWIM. SWIM stands for Stormwater Management Model. I already did. And so we're gonna we're gonna discuss what how to set up a swim model. Is this something you're interested in? Are you interested in storm water, uh, storm drain design? That's what you want to learn. Okay. Um, so these are some these are pictures of inlets. So I can have an inlet that looks like this, and this is a curb inlet. Um, in the U.S., you have these inlets in cities, and these are, and then under the ground you have pipes, and uh, they're used to manage storm water. So water goes into the inlets, and as long as there's not too much trash in the inlet, then the water will go into the inlet and the water will um, go underground and to, to some outfall. And so <clears throat> SWIM is a, one of the models that's used to model storm water and one of the things when, when you create a when you're doing a storm water design you'll have to do also you have to figure out your watersheds for each inlet and usually you do a stormwater design for an urban or maybe a, a residential area so they're usually for developed areas and so that means that the drainage will be impacted somehow and so you will have to do a manual uh, do some manual watershed delineation and you might have the delineated basins uh, at least in the US a lot of the big cities will have already have all their basins delineated um, or maybe you can just do do the basins by by hand and so you delineate your watersheds um, create your watershed model. Wherever you have an outlet in your watershed model in the storm drain model, so in SWIM the outlet is actually a storm drain inlet. So instead of having outlets in SWIM you have inlets and instead of having stream arcs that represent your streams, the streams will represent streets, gutters, and storm drains in a SWIM model. And there are lots of different methods. So we've already talked about how to get a hydrograph. You can use HEC1 or HMS to get your hydrograph. You can also use one commonly used method if you're doing storm drain modeling to get a hydrograph is called the rational method. And I'll be talking about the rational method here in just a second. But you have to have a hydrograph um, in WMS you have to have a hydrograph to export your your data to SWIM and then if you do that then your hydrograph information will be exported or the, just the peak flow of your hydrograph will be exported to SWIM and then when you run SWIM it will use the peak flow from your hydrograph to to uh, figure out how much water is in your pipes so in hydraulic modeling, and when you do a hydraulic model in WMS and you draw in pipes or streams in a hydraulic model, you draw your pipes from upstream to downstream. So in hydrologic modeling, if you're doing like a HEC HMS model, you'll draw your stream marks from downstream to upstream. It's just the opposite in hydraulic modeling. So for swim, you would draw your streams from upstream to downstream or your pipes. <coughs> After you draw in your streams, you select a command called, there's a map to schematic menu command, and I'll, I'll show you how to do this in a demonstration. 
but that creates this hydraulic schematic, which are these links and nodes. The links represent um, pipes, and the nodes represent junctions, pipe junctions, or man maintenance holes, access holes, we call them. Um, it's where pipes come together, and there's some kind of way to get into the pipe. That's a, I don't know, what do, what do you call that? You call that a manhole? Okay. Now there are, after you've defined your geometry for your swim model, you have to define your properties. And the properties for your swim model is mainly your pipe elevations. So you have to define your pipe elevations, your uh, and also your manhole elevations or your invert and your invert elevations. If you have and you probably don't have this, but if you have all your pipes in a GIS, you could read the pipes into WMS in the GIS module and then convert those to a storm drain coverage and then do your swim model in that coverage. If you have both a hydrologic model and a swim model in WMS, you can link the hydrologic model to the swim model. So you link rational method to swim, or you can link HEC HMS to swim, and uh, your outlets will be linked to your inlet. So this is the window where you define that. I'll show you what I mean by that. And then you save, you can save out your swim simulation and run swim. Before I do a demonstration, I'm just going to talk about the rational method a little bit. So the rational method is a very simple model. And <clears throat> we've already discussed this where you have, an, you have drainage, something like this. And if you have a bunch of streets, and the streets have curbs and inlets and things like that, the streets end up capturing the water that, run, that runs across the streets and they end up going to this outlet point. So the way to define that capture is you create streams along these streets. So your streets kind of turn into streams and anything that intersects those streets then uh, it changes your watershed delineation. So anything that hits those streets goes to the outlet point and you, you change your watershed delineation from your original delineation. And you always create those streets in, in a watershed model, you'll create those streets downstream to upstream. In the rational method, the rational method is this equation here, Q equals CIA. So a is just the area of the watershed. We already, you already know how to get the area of the watershed. You delineate your watershed, you get the area. I is the uh, rainfall intensity. And so that is usually defined in inches per hour, but it could also be in millimeters per hour. C is just the runoff coefficient. And if you multiply those together, you get the Q, the, the outflow for your watershed. So WMS has some tools for computing these. Um, you can get the areas. We already know how to do that. You just delineate your watersheds, compute the areas. It has something called a runoff coefficient coverage where you define different polygons in a runoff coefficient coverage. And those, for those polygons, you define runoff coefficients and then WMS will compute a composite runoff coefficient for each of your sub-basins in your model. And so this is what you end up, end up with. For the, for the rational method, you usually would define something called an IDF curve. And an IDF curve is a plot of um, the amount of rainfall that occurs the intensity of the rainfall at different recurrence intervals. And let me show you. So this is an IDF curve, intensity, duration, frequency curves. Um, 
So this plot here is an IDF curve. If you, are, do you guys use IDF curves? Have you ever used that? Yeah, probably not. So it's just the intensity of your rainfall. These different plots represent different recurrence intervals. So two year, five year, 10 year, 25 year, 50 year recurrence intervals with each of these plots. And then the duration is the uh, the amount, depending on how long your storm is, you're going to have a different intensity. So if I have a long storm, then my intensity is, is lower than if I have a really short storm. So if I have a really, I can have a really intense five minute storm and it has a higher intensity than if I have a 30 minute storm, uh, the intensity will be lower. So what we usually do in in the rational method is we get this IDF curve, we figure out what recurrence interval we want, so the, the 50 year, and then we get the time of concentration. You get the time of concentration using the equations in WMS. Then we look up that time of concentration. So let's say the time of concentration is 30 minutes. You get the curve that represents the 50 year recurrence interval and you go across and get the intensity. And so in this case, the intensity uh, is 5.525 inches per hour. The time concentration is 14. So I go over here, and the intensity is 5.525. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're assuming that the, the peak flow rates happens at the time of concentration for your sub-basin. That's what you're assuming, doing that. What's that? You do? Um, we do in the United States, but not in Egypt. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, we'll look at that, okay? So you're wondering if, if you have certain um, rainfall values, that the so if the software can compute the IDF curves. Um, we'll, look at, we'll look at it, see what it can do. So some of the limitations of the rational method, it's, it's designed to be used for really small watersheds, small sub-basins, and all the losses are lumped into your runoff coefficient. Um, you can do sub-basin analysis, so you can define your information at for each of your sub-basins, and then you can combine hydrographs. So I can compute a hydrograph for each of my sub-basins. I can combine the hydrographs and then route those hydrographs and you end up with different kinds of hydrographs. So to use the rational method in WMS, these are the steps. Do you have a question? Say that one more time. Each inlet, manhole. You could have a shape file or you could just define it in WMS. It would be hard to do. 
So if you don't have that information, there's no way to do your model. Yes, because the water, it, 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 would, it, it would not be able to mine the direction of the water, which uh, So the steps for using the rational method in WNS, these are the steps. You delineate your watershed, you already know how to do that. You uh, define your runoff coefficients, define your rainfall intensities, and compute your peak flow and generate a hydrograph if you need that. So let's, uh, let's see how to set up a swim model. In a rational method model. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, let's just read in this simulation that I had, that I just created. This is a Sinai. Maybe I'll zoom in here and we'll see if we have any roads. I don't know if there are any roads here. But let's download a, an image of this area. Actually, let's let's zoom in here. Just download a smaller image. Street. Um, I'm also going to read in some images that I have already downloaded. So I'll download this large, larger image, be able to see more where we are. Then we have this image for this smaller area here. Okay, so here's my, let's say this street has a storm drain along it. And we just want to do maybe a small storm drain model. Now for a basin this big, I usually would not use rational method. But in this case, I'm going to say we're going to use rational method. And it'll, it'll end up being a big flow rate, big storm drain. It'll have to be really huge probably to carry the amount of water for this watershed. But... Um, So let's, let's just, we already have our basin delineated, and we'll just run the rational method here. So we select rational method, go to this basin, and we need a runoff coefficient. And there are a couple of ways of getting that. One way is I can define a coverage, so I can do a, a runoff coefficient coverage. And in that coverage, I can define a some polygons that cover my basin area and maybe for this area the runoff coefficient it has a certain value and then for this area the runoff coefficient has another value I can build those and then define runoff coefficients so maybe here it's like 0 0.9 here maybe it's point Eight five. 
Yeah. Yeah, it probably should be smaller. So, anyway. So different, you can have different numbers. Um, and then you go to the GIS module and compute your GIS attributes and then there's this compute runoff coefficients command. And I can use the uh, runoff coefficient coverage to compute my runoff coefficients. Hit OK and WMS will uh, compute a runoff coefficient, composite runoff coefficient for that area. I can also just go in and if I know what my coefficient is or I can get an approximate number for it and I can enter the value. So let's say 0.3 is my runoff coefficient. Whatever, either way. Um, and then the rainfall intensity, normally what you would do is you would go in here to this IDF curve computation, so that's this compute IDF curves and you would compute an IDF curve and uh, get online data yeah so there's no online data available for getting the IDF curve um, because that's only in the United States but what you could do is you could say if you know what the peak flow rate or what the, the rainfall intensity is for some recurrence interval you know what the 5 minute 10 minute 15 minute 30 minute and 60 minute rainfall intensities are maybe you've computed them from from some historical data you can just enter those values so let's say uh, the 5 minute intensity is 9 8 7 6 oh actually this is yeah so 5 so that's my IDF curve. And actually, I'm going to just lower those numbers. Whoops. I'm going to lower those numbers to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. There's my IDF curve. I can select that curve. And I've already computed a time of concentration for this watershed. That time of concentration is transferred. And then this is my intensity. 0.189 inches per hour based on that time concentration in this curve here. Okay. So I hit OK here and that intensity is transferred to, to this window. Now I have a C, an I, and an A, and WMS will compute my flow rate. I also want to compute that uh, the flow rate at my outlet point. So my outlet point, I just want to use the same intensity. Whoops. Let's cancel. Go to the outlet point and um, I'll just use that same IDF curve, compute my intensity and uh, then I can compute my hydrograph at my outlet point. So let's compute a hydrograph. And so my hydrograph is just a triangle. That's what rational method computes. The time to the peak flow rate is the time concentration. And the peak flow rate is C, C times I times A. So it's the um, rational method. So the peak here is 3979 CFS. All right, so then um, I need to define my pipe network. If I'm going to do a pipe model, I need to find my network. So I create to do that, I create a new coverage. And this coverage, I'll just call it a storm drain coverage. And then I start at my outlet. So let's say I have an inlet at my outlet point, for an inlet for my in my storm drain. And maybe it's on this street somewhere. So I'll just click along this street. And so that's my pipe. Um, maybe you have another inlet down here. You could 
you could continue your storm drain model on down so I could add another link onto this network um, but I'm yeah I'll go ahead and do that I'll go ahead and add two links and then <clears throat> So that's my, that's pretty much all I need to do. Then I go to the storm drain menu and select this map to schematic. What this does is it creates a swim, it actually creates my swim schematic. The swim schematic, um, and then it, it assigns elevations from the DEM. So that I have these things, these are called links and nodes. And a link represents a pipe. A node represents either an inlet or a manhole or an outfall. Okay? And then for to define the data that I need for these links and nodes, I go to the hydraulic modeling module. So for HMS, you're going to use, for HMS, rational method, all those hydrologic models, you use the hydrologic modeling module. For SWIM and PECRAS, you're going to use the hydraulic modeling module. And so I'll just go in and define my, uh, WMS already computes my lengths and my elevations from my DEM. I can change these elevations or I can use whatever it, whatever it computes. I need to enter my pipe di diameters though. So let's say my diameter um, for both these pipes, they probably have to be really big pipes. I'm going to say eight feet. Okay, and this is in feet. And um, my downstream invert elevation is greater than my upstream. That's probably because my L I didn't uh, set up my model. Well, this is just kind of a fake storm drain network. So I'm going to change my upstream so it's higher. You usually want your, your downstream to be higher. So we'll say this is uh, 89, or we'll say 90, <coughs> and then 87, and then. Uh, for my link two, that's the downstream link. It starts at 87 and goes to 80. That's probably okay. That's a little bit steep, but we'll just go with that. Then I can define my node elevations. And for my nodes, um, the node one elevation, that's this node right here. Let's see. So I changed this node 3 elevation, that's the beginning node, to be 90, I think. That would I change, yeah, so 90. I just need to find all my elevations here. And the ground elevation is... Uh, just want it to be higher than that, so I'm going to say 95. And so these are all my elevations. WMS just by default sets the invert elevation to be 8 feet below the ground elevation. And you can change that, you can change these elevations if you need to, but that's just what it does. Okay, so I have all that defined. I need to still link my outlets to my nodes. So what this does is I have my drainage coverage and my drainage coverage has an outlet point. And that's this outlet point. I also have a storm drain coverage and my storm drain coverage has inlet locations or manhole locations. And so I can link my outlets in my drainage coverage to my inlets or my nodes in my storm drain coverage. And I can automatically do that or I can just manually do it. I know that node three is where the water is going in. So I can just select this, select my outlet point, and select link nodes. And that'll link node, 
my uh, outlet point in my drainage coverage to my inlet in my swim coverage. I could also auto link if I have everything set up right I can select uh, so let's unlink this I could enter a tolerance so I'd probably have to do a pretty big tolerance let's do 500 and we'll do auto link and then that will link my outlets to my inlets and then when I go to this inlet node 3 that's now linked to outlet 3C okay so I pretty much have everything I need set up I can go to swim and then uh, run EPA swim. We also support a model called XP swim. Does anybody use, do you use XP swim at all? Okay. EPA swim is, XP swim costs money, EPA swim is free. And so you can just install EPA swim, it's installed with WMS. I'll save this out. Um, we'll just save it. Actually, we'll save it to a new folder called swim. So this saves out a swim file. And it looks like I don't have swim installed on this computer. Um, I can download it, or also that when you install WMS, there's an option to install EPA swim. And um, you have to select that option. You have to turn it on to install it. But anyway. I'm not going to go through with the installation, but uh, anyway, you can save the swim file out, and then it'll come up in swim, and you can do that. Why don't we? Maybe we could try getting swim. So swim is from uh, EPA swim. Just search for that. But like I say, the, the version of SWIM that we support is included with the WMS installation. So you'll want to just um, just want to use the version that comes with WMS. It takes so it takes the hydrograph from the from the rational method here. So in the rational method, I get this hydrograph, and it takes the peak flow of that hydrograph and assigns it to my storm drain model. Assigns it to the inlet in my storm drain model. The inlet, if you want to see the whole hydrograph, it takes only one value, which is the peak. You can do either one. You It'll assign both the whole hydrograph is or the just the inlet or just the peak flow. I think the logic is the whole hydrograph. Yeah. So if you do the high, if you have a hydrograph, I think it'll assign the whole hydrograph. There's also an option in Swim to um, just assign the peak flow rate. So it'll it'll give you the the depth and the velocity at different points in your pipes. Looks like what? A matrix. Matrix. Okay. Yeah. 
some node will be linked to the hex of the hex of and the others will just transport the whole system to the end of the system. So, this one is the This white line? Yes, yes. It's another street mm -hmm. and yeah. another pipe. So I, I'm just doing an example here. I'm not trying Would to do the whole. Okay, uh -huh. Yes, you are right. But I mean, if it is also a, a manhole, would you link this one also to the outlet of the watershed? Um, if, the, if this if this road down here has an uh, yes. in-hole, yes. uh, uh, inlet. Yes, it will be also a node. Yeah. Um, so, 